All right, let's go to Auburn. Elijah McAllister, Auburn Jack linebacker with us right now on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. Welcome in, Elijah. How are you today? I'm doing well. appreciate y'all for having me on today. Yeah, we appreciate you coming on. Um, it, it, are you to the point in camp where it's not just camp anymore? You've got the game in sight, so it almost feels like you're in game week, or does this still feel like camp to you? You've done a lot of these. Yeah, uh, it feels like game week in some capacities. I think it's getting close as people start getting back on campus and you get a feel for class schedules and the season right around the corner. So camp's kind of over with. We're getting prepared to start game plan. Uh, so how different is it when you transfer in from a program like Vanderbilt to a program where you walk in and you see Heisman trophies and you see national championships? Yeah, um, I think it's different in a way that people here – I see the same people every day. We're not in a huge city. We're not a college town based in a huge city. We're a college right in the middle of a town like Auburn who loves their football and loves their schools. So it's amazing to have that support. Um, and I think just being here is just a blessing to be able to represent the Auburn family in a lot of different ways. So, yeah. I, I, I always look at the SEC, and it's changed a little bit over the last couple of years. But I'd love to know how you see the SEC. In my opinion, the SEC – is a defensive lineman and linebacker league that you've got to be really elite on the defensive line and linebacker if you're going to win championships you've been around the league how do you see the league i mean i know there are great quarterbacks and running backs and all those other positions but to me if you're not good in the front seven you're not going to win a championship do you having played in the league do you see it that way too and if so tell me how how important it is to be good on those that that front yeah, I would agree. I had an old coach a long time ago. He had this running joke. He always would say there's only three conferences in the world, the SEC, the AFC, and NFC. And it's funny. <laughs> all, the, all the NFL players that go to the NFL and the combine every single year for the last, I think, seven, eight years have been from the SEC, the most represented. And it shows the talent we have in this league. And obviously, you know, at the end of the day, it all starts up front on the offense and defensive line. You've got to be able to stop the run at the high level and get to the quarterback at a high level. Um, and those all work uh, through the front seven. On um, both both sides of the ball, so yes, I would agree with you. It's definitely a, a front front driven lead for sure. Elijah McAllister is with us, the uh, Auburn linebacker. Uh, Jack linebacker can be found on Twitter if you'd like to follow him there at e underscore McAllister one at e underscore McAllister one. He's with us on the JohnstonRVCenter dot com hotline. Obviously, transferring in from Vanderbilt, everything was going to be new to you, but this coaching staff is new to all of your teammates. Uh, Ron Roberts is the defensive coordinator. Can you describe the philosophy of Ron Roberts for me and what, what are Auburn fans getting with that defensive coordinator? Yeah, I mean, Coach Roberts is amazing. He's an amazing football mind. I think you're going to get a multiple defense. We're going to be able to do a lot of different things, and our defense is predicated off of running to the ball as fast as we can, as often as we can, uh, and creating turnovers. So he's that's been a point of emphasis here during camp and uh, as I've been with him during the spring as well. And I mean, we're going to, you know, have a lot of different looks for offenses to you know, see. You know, another great football mind, your head coach, Hugh Freeze. And, you know, we, we've been around Hugh a little bit. And he seems like one of these guys that would have success no matter what he does. Um, such a motivational guy. Have you ever been around a guy like Hugh before? And what do you think ultimately makes him a great head coach? Yeah, I think his ability to have a relationship with the players that's faith-based first, um, that foundation allows you to know you know, who he is as a person uh, every single day and how he's going to show up. Um, and then also just the connectivity with players, being able to talk to them, being open to talk to them. You don't have to really schedule a meeting to see him. You can see him walking around the hallway. You can talk to him uh, in passing. So that's nice. And he's unique because he's my first offensive head coach I've had. Uh, so that's different as well because, I mean, you know the offense is clicking, it's rolling, and he's such a great football mind in that sense as well. I, I, I want to ask you personally how tough it was to leave Vanderbilt because you were a captain there two times uh, how tough was that for you yeah I mean it was pretty difficult honestly I got some guys that I have shared many wins uh, and also shared some heartbreak there as well but guys who I've you know built relationships with that are last me a lifetime and it was tough to be able to you really just leave the guys honestly um, I had got both of my degrees I had you know did everything I could on the field but to leave the people in that locker room was the toughest part of my opinion uh, let's don't lose the sentence he just said. I got both my degrees. Uh, you are actually pursuing your PhD at Auburn. How close are you to completing that? Could you be a doctor while still playing football? Yeah, so I, I'll I'll be probably halfway done by the end of the season, um, by the end of bowl season, and then hopefully finish it up. You know, depending on 
how the season goes and as I'm in the off season, you know, as I'm playing at the next level. But, you know, I'm trying to uh, chip away at it every single day as much as I can because at the end of the day, I'm taking advantage of everything I can in life uh, through through God's vision and his purpose. But I'm, I'm in school. I might as well take something that's going to help me for the next stage of my life as well. Yeah. Um, I'm a kid of the 80s. So back then we had posters. There was these things you'd hang on the wall and everything. Every player had a label like for you. I could picture doctor of pain, doctor of sacks or something like that. Are you trying to label something like that? You know, you could bring back posters, make them cool in 2023 again. Yeah. Yeah. Like some little superhero poster would be cool. I remember having a couple, you know, in my house, um, I'm, I'm from New Jersey. So I'm a big Giants fan and that D line that we've always have a great D line where there's Michael Strahan, Lawrence Taylor, OC Miura, Justin Tuck. So I used to have, all those posters and stuff in my room of those Giants, great defenses. Yeah, I was going to ask you about growing up in Jersey. A week ago today, we were doing shows from Ocean City, Maryland. And I know there's an Ocean City, Jersey, but where did you spend summers? Did you guys vacation any certain spot up and down the East Coast? I mean, we kind of stayed in the Jersey Shore area. You know, I'm, my high school is a five-minute walk from the beach, and my house is a, probably a five-minute drive from the beach. So uh, we just kind of stayed along Jersey Shore, you know, hit the boardwalk, and you know, got all the vendors, got the water there, got everybody uh, you need in, in the beach and the sand. So it's nice. It's a nice area. I enjoy being from New Jersey, and I'm so prideful of my home state. I do miss the beach, though, being down here, like, as close as I was to the beach, Jersey. I mean, you're what, what is Auburn? Two and a half hour drive to the Gulf? The Gulf beaches are so yeah. much superior. You, I know you're a Jersey guy, Elijah. You have to admit the Gulf beaches are much better. It's nice. The sand's different. The water's different. Yes. I will agree. It's, it's much nicer. <laughs> yes, no doubt. Uh, Elijah McAllister, the Auburn linebacker with us. When it, what is the last class you made a B in? I imagine you as an all-A student. I can't really remember. Uh, probably something that had to do with math. <laughs> That's not really something I, I probably enjoy, but I like learning about people, uh, the human brain, uh, how theory connects in practice and everything. We've seen, but math is not really my strong suit. So it's probably something in math. <laughs> but he can't remember the last B he had. Yeah. I, I, again, do not let that wash over you. That doesn't get lost in this 2.2 uh, <laughs> student right here. I'll yes. tell you that. Yeah. Hey, I, I barely kept eligibility every time, man. I'll tell you. Um, Kirk does a great job. He and his staff down at Auburn. I'm told you play the piano. Do you still practice yeah. the piano? Do you still play it occasionally? And what's your go-to song if we slid a piano in right now for you? Yeah, um, I don't get to practice it too often, but I still, you know, can play at a high level. All my family plays an instrument and sings at least one or two instruments because we all grew up in a church. Um, so a song that I would play would probably be some old church hymnal. I don't know, something my grandmother likes to sing. Um, there's a song that you, that my grandma always just sings. She used to say, um, he said, he may not come when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. So talking about he's an on-time God, yes, he is. So I'll probably be able to play that for her as she's singing with my family. And I just, I just really enjoy playing instruments because it's rooted in my family and the foundation we have in the church. So I'm going to guess being in Jersey, you're either an Eagles fan or a Giants fan. Giants fan. Giants? Yeah, Gi Giants, 100%. Yeah, you're definitely either an Eagles fan or Giants fan. My family split in that. No Jets. No Jets fans at all. <laughs> but Eagles or Giants, uh, we're, we're split. My uncle's a big Eagles fan. I'm a huge Giants fan. So yeah. I hate to tell you this. It's going to be a bad year if you guys are not Jets fans. <laughs> you got Rodgers, man. I'm hoping he does well. I, I really like – I think he's a really good quarterback, obviously. I think he's one of the most talented quarterbacks we've ever seen in the league. Um, I'm excited to see what he does in New York. It's a big market for him, so he should enjoy himself. If or when you get to the league, uh, first quarterback you want to sack when you get there? Because that first sack is going to be special. Don't you want it to be like a future Hall of Famer, right? It's definitely Patrick Mahomes. You know, it was it was Brady for the longest. It's like, I, please, please go to the NFL as fast as you can so you can go sack Brady. And now that Brady's going, it's definitely – Patrick Mahomes, you know, he's on the trajectory to be that that great one. So, all right, uh, biggest food difference living in New Jersey and living in the Deep South. New Jersey, huge Italian population, a ton of Italian food to eat, a lot of sandwiches, hoagies, different things like that. Down south, not so much, a lot of fried food, uh, barbecue, different things like that. So that's the biggest difference. Have mm -hmm. you been by Acre yet? Had a little Acre food? Yes, yes. Me and my dad went there actually after. Might have been a spring game or. Yeah, something like that. And that was amazing. I loved it. It's one of my favorite spots here. Yeah, that's a great spot. All right, he is Elijah McAllister. Why don't you, while you are here, promote your nonprofit? You also, I mean, he's a PhD student, plays the piano, knows good food, knows football, and you have a nonprofit. We would love to help you out with that. Describe what it does and how people can help if they would like to. Yeah, so my nonprofit organization I started probably about a year and a half ago. It's titled the All for One and One for All Foundation. Uh, the two pillars are education and experience, so allowing 
uh, underserved youth to be able to experience things and never get access to and to educate them on life skills that they can apply uh, throughout their whole life. And just, you know, I want to give back to the community, whatever community I'm in, whether that's in Nashville at Vanderbilt or here at Auburn or in New Jersey, I want to be able to impact the youth in a positive way and sacrifice. Um, and you can support any way you can, even an Instagram follow, a donation, any, anything is appreciated. I'm just so thankful to be able to be on this platform to support and help the next generation so that they can be in the seat I'm sitting in today because it's an amazing one here at this great university. That's a great attitude. Elijah, uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much for the time, and uh, we'll talk again soon. Definitely will. Thank you for having me.